Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Austin and today it's time for a brand new video. So today we'll be going over how to use OBS Studio for Mac. It's a great free program. It's super, super easy to use and it's there without a doubt the best program on the market right now. It's 100% legal. It's it's There's no illegal, illegal stuff going on here. There's no illegal torrents. There's no Pirate Bay. It's genuinely free and it's awesome to use. It's great and I love using it. So you can download it from the obsproject.com. When you're there, you want to go check out Mac OS 10.11 plus, you can download it straight from here. <clears throat> so also we need a second program. It's called I show you audio capture. It's going to be used for recording our desktop audio. So it is a necessity and you will absolutely need it. So we can download that as well. It's free. And I want you guys to install both of those right now. Also, before I move on, let me just let you know that I will be updating the description of this video and pinned comment of this video with an updated video if this version of OBS ever gets updated for Mac and there's an important update, I will be reposting a brand new tutorial to match that new update. So if you have any questions, you can just make sure you check the description and comments. I will be also answering questions in the comments if you have any questions, so be sure to leave them down below if you are struggling with anything. I do check it daily. So anyway, moving on, let's actually just jump right into how, did, how, how does this actually work. So first things first, load up OBS and we can get started. So first thing, let's go to the settings in the bottom right of the screen and you're gonna launch a window that looks a lot like this. So if you notice my theme is dark, uh, by default yours might be on the default. I think the white looks horrendous, so leave that on dark. I think it looks very, very clean that way. Next up, you wanna to go to output. I'm not gonna be covering streaming at all in this video, only recording. As I said, you can stream to Facebook Live, Twitch, the works with this program, but I'll only be covering uh, so recording, nothing live. So moving on, if you go to the output tab, you wanna to go to output mode, change it from simple to advanced, go to the recording tab, and then make sure type is on standard. Recording path is where you're gonna be saving your files after you record them, so make sure it's someplace that you know where it is. So I, I set mine to my external hard drive, because I have a terabyte backed up and only 128 gigs in my actual laptop itself. So make sure you do record to you know a big external hard drive or something. Recording format, uh, I like to leave that on MP4, or by default it'll be on FOV. I like to put it on, on MP4, it's just a better quality uh, issue there. Next up, you have audio tracks. Now this is for someone that knows what they're talking about, that's someone that's very experienced with this. Um, audio, the number of audio tracks here determines uh, how many different audio sources that you have. So since we have two, we have two audio sources. We have, first of all, our desktop audio, and secondly, we have my voice. I'm talking right now, and you want to record any sort of background uh, audio going on from with my computer. This is really important, especially if you play like games and stuff, you can record game audio. It's very, very key that you record the background audio as well. So you want to have two audio tracks, one for each thing, my voice and one for the actual game audio. I'll be talking about how to do that later on. Well, I'll be coming back to this in about a couple minutes. So next up, you want to leave your encoder as stream encoder, but you can mess around with the other ones. You can kind of see what has the best success for you. The stream encoder works best for me. Don't touch rescale output or anything else. Uh, if you look at audio, you can do not touch audio as well. These settings are perfectly A-OK. -okay. Um, we'll come back to audio, the audio tab on the left toolbar. We'll come back to that in a couple minutes. And video, this is very, very important. So you want to make sure that, that your uh, base cam's resolution matches the current resolution that you're recording at. So since I'm actually recording my screen resolution right now, it's a bit off. It's about 1440 by, by 900. I want to make sure that I'm outputting at 1440 by 900. You want to make sure that these two are the same. You don't want to have to scale it in a weird way. You want to make sure that the base resolution is the same as the output resolution. This is the best way to prevent any sort of loss in quality. Make sure they're both identical. Typically, if you have a standard computer, it'll be 1920 by 1080p. For 99% of you, that's what you're going to get. But if you have someone like me that has like the, I have the new MacBook Pro 2017, where it has a very bizarre retina display, so it has 1440 by 900, I'm going to be dealing with this resolution right now. Next up here, we have downscale filter. I'm going to leave that on by cubic. If you, Langsos is better quality, but Langsos has a significantly higher file, uh, file sizes. And this is already, these file sizes for OBS are quite large. We're talking a 10 minute video is several gigs it's very, very expensive on your uh, storage. So make sure that you, you know, you're not going a bit overkill with your quality and you have zero space in your hard drive. So make sure you get the best of both worlds here. I'm only, I'm only gonna be using Bicubic, but Langsos will get you better quality. Next up is common FPS. So this is just gonna be what your frames per second is gonna be. I just like to leave mine on 30, but like I said, 60 is twice as much storage and I wanna use up too much space in my hard drive. Now, that's pretty much done. If you want to really get the best quality, you can go to the YUV color range under the advanced tab on the left toolbar and change it from partial to full. But I'm going to leave mine on partial for now because 
I don't want to use up too much extra space. So you can hit OK, and we're pretty much good to go. We need to, to affix our sound settings. So you want to go to the top right corner of your screen, click on the spotlight, and you want to search for audio. You can get audio MIDI setup, press return, and you'll be brought up with this window. So you're gonna have three main things here by default. You have, or maybe a couple depending on your audio setup, but you make sure that all I show you audio capture is shown. So you wanna hit the plus icon bottom of the corner of your screen, go to create multi output device, and we brought with a brand new uh, audio device here. You wanna click two uses, you wanna click built in output, and I show you audio capture. Make sure drift correction is applied to built in output. Change the master device to built in output. And yes, you change drift correction, make sure drift correction is always on built-in output, and the master device is built-in output. Sample rate doesn't matter too much, 44.1 kilohertz is, is already quite good. 48 is a bit, you know, it's good as well, but you're not gonna see a massive difference, so I'll just leave it on 44.1 kilohertz. You can minimize this window, we'll, we won't be needing it, but just in case, uh, you wanna go to the top right corner of your screen, go to the spotlight once again, and type in sound. Hit return, and tell you to do the system preferences for your sound outputs. So you're gonna have your headphones, or, some, or your default built-in audio, whatever that is. I show you audio capture and multi-output device. Select multi-output device. Uh, just make sure that when you're done recording, you switch back to whatever your default is. Just keep that in mind. Uh, and also your input, make sure you select your, your best microphone. I don't have a microphone plugged into this right now. So I'm just gonna just select ex external microphone. But uh, yeah, anyway, moving on, let's minimize this. Now we're ready to finally set up our actual settings for OBS. So first thing, Make sure your scene, make sure it's highlighted. So a scene is something that you can set that's customized for each recording session. So if you wanna record game A, you can create a scene for game A. If you wanna record just your display capture, you can create a scene called display where all it does is just record your screen. You can create multiple scenes for different scenarios in which you'll actually need to record. So you can don't have to keep resetting you know, your settings every single time you change what you're recording at. You know? So make sure your scene is highlighted, press the plus icon, then go to display capture. The first thing we're gonna do here is go to display capture, we'll just call it display, hit enter, hit okay. Pop-up window is gonna, is gonna appear, <coughs> sorry. That's gonna appear, to hit display zero, show cursor, yes, crop, don't touch the crop, uh, hit okay. And we're pretty much, we're almost there now. You want to make you right click your front preview, make sure that lock preview is not selected. You want to make sure that it is unlocked. <coughs> you want to press the red uh, corner on the top of corner of your screen. You want to slowly drag it towards the middle to make the screen appear smaller. You want to make sure that this actually fills up the screen entirely. So keep going, keep going. And here we are. So you want to make sure that it fits. It'll snap to fit to the screen. When it does that, you can right click again, hit lock preview, and then you're pretty much good to go with your screen. That's done. Next up here is go to sources, hit plus again. And actually, no, before we do that, you want to go to settings, sorry. Go to the top, bottom right corner, go to settings, go to audio. Now go to mic auxiliary audio device two, go to the drop down, and go I show you audio capture. This is a big deal. Hit okay. Now we have two in the mixer. We have mic slash aux one and just mic slash uh, aux two. So what we want to do is here is we want to isolate them. So uh, let's add, let's first of all add the sources. So go to the plus icon under sources, go to audio input capture. We'll just go add existing, go mic aux one, hit okay. Now we'll do the exact same thing again. Press plus, hit add audio input capture, and then go mic aux two. Hit okay again. Now this is where we gotta change some stuff up. So go to the mixer, go to the gear underneath either or mic aux or mic aux two, doesn't matter. Go to advanced audio properties and this window is going to appear. So you have mic aux two and mic aux one, as you can see on the left side. Now uh, you see all the tracks are selected for some of these. You wanna make sure that they're isolated. So you only have mic aux in track one and mic aux two in track two. You wanna make sure that they're actually distinct and different. So mic aux one is only outputting to track one. We, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure the mic aux two is only outputting to track two. So you're gonna just simply unselect everything that is not track two. So now we have mic aux two track one and mic aux two to track two. So which means that we're gonna have our speech, you know, our, our microphone input into track one and our computer output into track two. You wanna hit close. And now we're finally ready to record. We're 100% done, we're good to go, we can start recording right now. So 
just so we have something to record with. I'm gonna just Google my old videos I, f I filmed ages ago on how to use fraps. Uh, it's a tutorial I made back in about, I think, like 2013. It's been a while, I've been on YouTube for a while, man. So to record, finally, you wanna hit start recording. We're now recording, you can see the recording timer at the bottom right of your screen. It's recording my voice and it also records audio. So let me play this video again. Record video games. Um, this now it's recording PC, my, I don't way, know, 15 year old self. This is great, three, two, one. Uh, I'm gonna end playing that video. I stop the recording, I'm gonna press stop recording. Three, two, one. And the video is done. I've now finished my recording and I can go access it. All right, so I'm editing this video right now and I explained how multi-tracks worked, but I didn't do a very good job of it. So in QuickTime, you can only hear the first track. So since we're recording two tracks, recording track one being our voice and track two being our actual computer desktop audio, you can only hear our voice and you can't hear the computer audio. So to prove to you that we actually are recording two separate audio tracks, here I've taken our clip, I'm gonna put it into Adobe Premiere Pro, and I'm gonna show you that when you put the file into an editor and render it, you can then be left with an end product that has both audio tracks, your desktop audio and your voice. So here's our track, I'm gonna drag it into Adobe Premiere Pro, and I'm not too sure if this works with iMovie or not or any other video editors out there, but here's how Adobe Premiere Pro works. I'm gonna drag it into the media, take a second to import, Here's our clip, I'm gonna drag it in, as you can see it's 20 seconds long, I'm gonna drag it into our timeline. As soon as we line, uh, drag it in, you're gonna see that we actually have one video track and we have two audio tracks. So as, we, as you can see here, this is actually how it works. We have these two audio tracks here that, uh, let's scroll through so you can see that audio track one is gonna be just our desktop audio, or sorry, is just me talking, and, de and uh, audio track two is just the, the computer desktop audio. So let's actually just hit play and you can see how this actually works. We're now recording, you can see the recording timer at the bottom right corner of your screen. It's recording my voice and it also records audio. So let me play this video again. Record video games. Um, this now is only for PC my, by the way, so if you're on console this won't work. But two, one. We're gonna... I'm gonna end playing that video. I'm gonna stop the recording, I'm gonna press stop recording. Three, two, one. And that's how it works. So I wanted to show you guys, I want to be very clear that if you want to actually see the difference between the two audio tracks, you have to put it into a video editor of some type. You can't hear the second audio track if you just put it into QuickTime. It's very, very crucial here that if you are looking to get these two different audio tracks, you have to have a video editor that is compatible with video tracks which have multiple audio tracks attached. Just want to let you guys know, I want to hammer in this point so you guys know what I'm talking about. I hope this helped you guys. And I'll see you in a sec. So that's the video. As you can see, it worked just fine there. Uh, and that's how to use OBS to record. From here, you can drag it into Adobe Premiere Pro, Sony Vegas. I don't care what editing program you use, iMovie, it all works the same. That's how to use OBS. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful, definitely drop a like, a like down below. It means the world to me. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments. I read them all the time on my phone when I'm on the go. Check right when I wake up in the morning before I go to bed at night. So definitely be sure to drop that down below. And subscribe for more tutorials. If you have any requests for more tutorials, definitely let me know if you want to have help editing or reviewing. All summer I'm going to be posting new videos on this channel. So definitely stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.